on stats, accuracy, headshot rate, and IVI score. On your journey of self-improvement as an infantry player, one of the most important tools you have at your disposal is your statistics page. Now, right off the bat, I want to deal with the stats don't matter crowd. If your opinion is that stats don't matter, that's fine. How you play the game and ultimately what you do with the stats that you generate on a daily basis is totally your business. Just know that regardless of whether you pay them any mind or not, they are still there and people are free to look you up at any time. Unless you happen to live in the EU where you can apparently opt out of such data collection. The point is that when read properly and with a little nuance, stats can tell you a whole lot about a player and how they play this game. I've been doing this for years. I can look at your page and basically tell you exactly how you play the game. It's all right there. Just because you don't like it or disagree with my framing of it doesn't suddenly or magically make that data vanish into thin air. It's all there. Are your stats the end-all be-all of your character and your played time in the game? No. There's a lot more to it than that. However. I find that when it comes to the discussion about weapon mechanics, faction balance, game mechanics, and things of the sort, lesser skilled players usually get these things wrong. High skilled players also get these wrong, but at a much lower rate, and not by orders of magnitude. What I'm getting at here is that your skill or ability directly influences your opinions on everything to do with the game, whether you know it or not. Do some people play only for stats? Absolutely. But players that only play for specific stats are very easy to pick out when looking at their overall data. I guess we have to talk about why some people may choose to focus on a stat-based meta for the game. Let's be upfront about it and say that Planetside 2, in terms of an overarching metagame, is a very shallow game. Locking continents for your faction doesn't really matter because they open up a few hours later anyway. The rewards for it are laughably terrible, and the whole thing is very anticlimactic. It may be something to you for the first dozen or so times, but a lot of us have been going through the same belt loop for seven years. You fight over the same copy and paste bases on the same continents for the same nothing reward. The grand strategy and depth that a lot of role-playing morons constantly yammer on about ultimately boils down to how many people you can throw on a base. So, congratulations, role-player commanders. Your grand victories by leading hundreds of players down lattice lines until you cap the continent has earned you exactly... nothing. Nothing except a well-deserved reputation for making playing the game as miserable as possible for everyone else playing it at the time. For a lot of players, the afterthought of a meta, the game has ultimately led them to pursue other means of personal satisfaction. Since the game ultimately fails to give you the personal satisfaction you might want, it became necessary to find some other ways to get your jollies. Now, where can I get personal satisfaction that can also turn into success in the game I really like to play? Self-improvement. Now, what exactly is self-improvement in the Planet Side 2 infantry combat game? The beauty of it is that it can be a whole bunch of things, or maybe just a few things. Maybe you're someone that's already figured out their sensitivity and how to control bursting and recoil. Maybe you're just logging on to work on your kills per hour. Maybe your accuracy is okay, but your headshot ratio is not very good. Maybe your accuracy, headshot rate, and kills per hour are good, but your KD sucks because you can't or don't know how to position yourself properly. Who knows? The point is that there are dozens of aspects of your game to work on when you get down to basic levels. For the player that's trying to get better, no matter how long you've been playing or whatever level you're at, there's always something for you to get better at. There's always something for you to work on. And once you get to a level that you're happy with, the payoff is infinitely more rewarding than watching the sky turn a particular color and then getting rotated to another warp gate to do it all over again. So how do you know if you're improving? How do you know if you're getting better at the things you're working on? It's fairly simple. Use a stats page. For this specific video, and others to follow, 
I will primarily be referencing the stats page from stats.dawsonfall.com. There are several others, but this is the one I've been using primarily since it was put into commission many years ago. This is the DA stats page. On your DA stats page, you're going to find hundreds of numbers. From top to bottom, you're going to find your title, character name, battle rank, faction, level progress bar, primary class, primary weapons, achievements that are site specific, directive score for your character, your history report, a 31 day and a 12 month time frame, MLG report, decals and camo, domain data, general information, time information, stats per minute, stats per hour, stat totals, individual class and vehicle details, weapon stats board, and finally your consumable stats board. I'm going to start by talking about the history report and how to use it. It's a fairly simple chart divided into a 31 day section daily and a 12 month report yearly. With the drop down tab that is initially on the kills tab you have kills, deaths, hours, played, medals, score in thousands, certs, ribbons, level ups, captures, defenses, and under the advanced section you have KDR, score per minute, and kills per hour. In a nutshell, this chart will give you day by day and month by month tally of what you've been doing in the game. The next section I'm going to go over is probably the most important section on the page in terms of infantry combat. The infantry only domain tab has a few key stats that you should be paying attention to while trying to improve. Those are accuracy, HSR or headshot rate, IVI score, kills, infantry KDR, aim tendency, and shots per kill. Accuracy is quite simply the amount of shots you land on targets you shoot at. To keep it simple and straight to the point, if you're shooting under 30% accuracy, you need to improve here. For me, 30% is the absolute baseline. If you're going to get to the point where you can go to a fight and make a difference by taking on and ultimately killing a whole bunch of guys, your basic ability to keep your weapon on what you're shooting at for anything under 30% is a liability that will ultimately hinder everything else you're trying to do. So, lower than 30% needs improvement. Keep in mind, the very best infantry players current and past playing the game seem to cap out at about 40% or slightly higher. If you're at 30, shoot for 33. If you're at 33, shoot for 35. If you're at 35, shoot for 40. If you're at 40, congrats, you're one of the elite. Headshot ratio or HSR. This is the percentage of kills that resulted or ended with a headshot. Now me, personally, I wish there was another stat here. I wish that I could actually see the percentage of headshots that I actually land in engagements not just whether or not the very last bullet that killed the guy was a headshot. Nevertheless, if you're actually shooting the weapons the way you're supposed to be, most, if not all of your shots on target are going to be headshots in most situations, though not all. So this stat will have to do. So what's a good headshot ratio to shoot for? For this stat, it's a little bit more complicated. The problem here in shooting for a specific number to be happy with is that it's not always beneficial or even possible to purely headshot a player into oblivion. What you don't want to do is sacrifice a kill or put yourself in a situation where you barely win or you straight out lose simply because you wanted to finish the guy with a headshot. For standard targets in a standard situation, the majority of the time, you're going to be able to headshot give someone and get that one in the bag. There are other times where going for that opportunity to improve that stat will be a hindrance to your ability to kill that guy and get the fight over with. With all that said, if you end up between 30 and 50% headshot rate, you're probably doing just fine. If you start to see yourself going over 50 and into the 60s and 70s, one of two things is probably happening. You're specifically only trying to kill people with headshots or the players you're playing against for this particular fight or session are completely potato and they walk in straight lines, they barely move or don't do anything at all when shooting at you. So for the first situation there, if you're shooting into the 60s, 70s, or 80s, you're solely focused on landing every single bullet as a headshot just to move the stat. Generally, your accuracy is going to suffer for that. I once met a player who specifically played with 4x scopes and had a 75% plus headshot ratio. His general accuracy was around 25% or so, as well as having a pretty low kill per hour and a kill per minute number. He basically sacrificed his well-roundedness to play in a silly manner that didn't even really make him that much more above average than your standard player in infantry combat. 
Quite simply, he missed a lot and you didn't. So all that high number for HSR didn't really amount to anything. Long story short, don't be that guy. A 30-30 player, as in 30% accuracy, 30% headshot rate, is already quite good enough to deal with most, if not all, the targets that he will encounter within the game. The last stat I'm going to talk about in this video is your IVI score. Your IVI score is functionally your accuracy stat number multiplied by your headshot rate number. That's it. It can be used as a loose estimation of an individual's ability to aim. The problem here is that this number is very easily manipulated by specific playstyles. For example, here is a player with a 2164 IVI score. Wow, that's pretty high. Looking further into the numbers, we see that his accuracy stat is 27.2%. All right, that's passable, that's doable, that's fine. His headshot rate is 79.38%. Hot damn, that is really high. I start scrolling down the page, and I see that this person lives for 30, 35 minutes on average. Um, that's the first red flag. And he kills three players per hour. So... Yes, he has a high IVI score, but he's played Stalker Infiltrator for 9,000 hours, and he kills three people an hour. That's the problem with IVI. If you use it as an end-all, be-all meaning marker for infantry skill, you're going to be wrong. A lot. If you use it as a soft, basic idea of what the player is, and you kind of already know how the guy plays infantry, i.e. he's a dueling heavy and not a Stalker Cloaker or a Sniper, you'll be able to use this stat to pretty well gauge who you're fighting. But remember, there are caveats to everything here. A straight-up 1,000 IVI player can beat a 2,000 IVI player in any given engagement. To be fair, though, the 2,000 IVI player is generally the better player and aimer and will win more than his fair share against a 1,000 IVI score player. You just can't get caught up in IVI score. It's like any other tool. If you use it in the wrong application or in the wrong way, it's not going to do what it's supposed to. That's all for now. The second part of this video will be covering your infantry KDR and KDR in general, which is why it needs its own separate video, as well as your stats per minute and stats per hour. Thanks for looking.